Welcome back, everyone. This is one Phoenix, right? Trials and Tribulations. Now we are ready to take on the trial here in the case against Ron DeLay. And, um, but yeah, before we get started, hope you guys have an awesome day today. Hope you guys are doing well. I just gonna, I just want to get straight into this. But, yeah, we had three days, well, one day of investigating, but it took three episodes, but... Anyway, October 13th, 9.36 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number four. Hey, Nick. What is it? Something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy. Oh, so check out the Master Mask Glossy I bought. You bought this... where? From the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. You know, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Master Mask pub publicity photo stuck into the court record. Shot of Master Mask striking a pose. Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did, but it doesn't look like things are gonna get any less ugly for you. Cause I did it. I'm the criminal. Me, me, me. Is that it again? I sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor, I admit it. But, you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but... That doesn't mean I didn't commit the crime. Normally when I say of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic, but you... you... yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure they give me a guilty verdict, please. Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, the Desi, honey. But bonjour. Well, actually, I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, er, uh, well, uh, you see, actually the thief is, er, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is er, innocent. If he's declared guilty, I'll it be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck. To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is master mask or not, but there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Desiree. October 13th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 6. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... What a stupid question. Well, what did you say? Fine, let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? No, I'm, I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. A, who are you? I am Godot, legendary prosecutor. I've never lost a case. Ah, he's the one that Detective, Detective Atme was talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Ha! Huh. None. What did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. N never but you said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but a, a mask and a court of law? Ha! Huh. Don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks, either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy's a real deal, all right, Nick. Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So we finally meet, Mr. Phoenix Trait. Nick, is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me Trait. Just who is this masked man? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Well then, uh, Prosecutor Gobo, 
It's not Gobo, it's Godo, you honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trey. But what is it? Are you familiar with the saying a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder... How much you can withstand before you and your case break in two? Hmm, well then, let's hear from our first witness. Um, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Look. The important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking. We're listening. Y y yes sir. Alright, witness. First, let's hear about... What you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes sir. Witness testimony. Master Mask's Crimes. Master Mask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent the card on to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was Master Master. It fits his M.O. to a T. Hmm, so then the actual identity of this Master Mask is... Mr. Cadeau, what, what are you... We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Godot. Blacker than a moonless light, hotter than more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please, proceed. Very well. It's only coffee, after all. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you gonna do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all we can do, all we can do, is show that it wasn't Master Mask who stole the urn. Cross examination: Master Mask crimes. Okay, he's a master thief. So confident he's sending his calling card. This was his fifth heist. Now we can either press this statement. Or we can press this statement, which I'm gonna go ahead and press. No, I don't want. No. I didn't mean to press. I'm sorry. First of all, there's the calling card. We're 100% sure it's authentic. Then there's the fact that he seems to know all about the security system. And so, since this robbery system fed all these. That's right. Means that Master Mask be Nick, it definitely looks like he was Yeah, I, I should have presented instead. Yeah, I'm gonna skip this. I didn't mean to press, I meant to present. And we are going to present the urn. Sorry about that, everyone. Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. Well, well what do you mean? Now, Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I meant from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Master Mask would normally go after. Ugh. Hmm, if I, if, I, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Ray, you're saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of Master Mask. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was this last robbery the work of Master Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Godot? 
Oh, this dude and this coffee. This coffee here is it's my own special blend. I call it Godot number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I've got on my mind right now, Mr. Trey. What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. If you're saying it wasn't Master Mass that stole the urn, then it must be someone imitating Master Mass's methods. A fake. A, a fake to mask? Fake to mask, that sounds so ridiculous, but I like it. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trey. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor was, that night was half a fake. Hmm. Though I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. We're gonna go ahead and save. Looks like I'm gonna have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Wardley Taylor that night was in fact fake the mask. is right here. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Go on, use this pointer and show just what about this picture is so peculiar. It's right here, of course. You mean, Master Mask? I have here a piece of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch on the mask chest. A breach? Here, here, Bailiff, get my steed. We need to retreat at once. A brooch, Your Honor. It's a sort of clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Oh, I see now. But the master mask and security camera photo... Ah, he has no brooch. That brooch is the same as the emblem on the mask calling card and serves as his symbol. But the thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this master mask is a fake. But I've been fooled again. Well, order, it's true. Undeniably true. Detective Gumshoe, how how could you have overlooked this? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I don't know how I... Hey, now. If you're gonna have a pity party, invite me, too. But Mr. Cadeau, you deserve some blame in this, too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh, the brooch you're talking about. You mean this? Ah, but that's Master Man's brooch. Well, where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? He must mean the army face statue. Well, why didn't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. Ugh, this guy is one cool customer. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? That friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there, too. <laughs> hickeys. Figuratively speaking, of course, I'm referring to Ron Delight's fingerprints. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch? Order! Order in the court! Mr. Cadeau, let's see that brooch. I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She, I mean, it appears to have been torn off some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. Uh-oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. The mask brooch out of the court record found in the shadow of Army Face statue. Looks like it was torn off of some clothing. Huh. You must look good though. 
And you get burned. Good. He's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You get done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. Bailiff, bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally time for the ace detective to make his appearance, huh? Yep. One second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shh, silence. <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. Well, what's clear? It's very. The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? But, well, yes, that's right. Huh, not bad, not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Acme, Ace Detective and Rising Star Illuminating the Heavens. The way these two make a perfect pair. They'd either be best friends or they'd tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on that night of the crime you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle was worth more than a hundred Detective Gumshoes. If Detective Gumshoe was worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some reason. I'm sure of it. Well then, tell us what the special monocle of yours witnessed. Witness testimony. What I witnessed. It was approximately 1 o'clock in the morning, just after the day changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Master Mask, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seemed so proud of his performance that evening. <laughs> well, sir, old timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief. But of the king of thieves, the great master mask, my arch enemy. That is what, what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm, very well. Proceed with a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Okay, cross-examination. What he witnessed. It is approximately 1 o'clock in the morning. That's when his nemesis showed up. Now, either at Statement 3 or Statement 4, we can present the brooch. Mr. Acme, could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Aha, <laughs> this belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch nemesis, Master Mask. It is, in point of fact, Master Mask's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how that happened. Huh. Elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Not quite. It clearly shows signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! We can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in a position to have a struggle with the thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You detective at me. Ugh. Detective Atme, you must have fought with that thief that night. So, why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime. Uh, I am uh, no. Well, wait just a moment, sir, old timer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. <laughs> I just remembered you, Honor. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You talk too much. 
with this. So are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. But excuse me? Save the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my roles. Indeed, I understand. I, Luke at me, agree completely. With this testimony, fight with the thief. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. However, Luke Athley cannot be so easily discombobulated. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were not enough. His first blow struck true, bam, and that's all she wrote. So in the end, you did catch a glimpse of Master Mask? Correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm. Well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused by which testimony goes with which case. But that can't be good. Cross-examination. Fight with the thief. Okay, let's go ahead and save. Okay. Luke at me cannot be demobulated. Thief grabbed the weapon. True gentleman fights with his own fists. First blow struck true. Bam, that's all she wrote. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powerricious. Powerricious? I assumed the at me fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do I do now? Should I ask more about this? Yeah, I'm curious about this at me fi fighting style. What is this at me fighting style? I'm sorry, but that's a trade secret. I really can't say anymore. But, I suppose I can tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall, that way no one can get behind you. That's it? That's the acne fighting style? Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what about the testimony? It is very important. Of course it's important. We learned a detective's secret technique after all. Yes, indeed. I remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone uh, late at night. Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Now then, witness. We'll go ahead and add that secret information to the official testimony. I put my back to the wall to fight, but the thief's blow landed upon my third eye. Oh, really? Well, how do you explain this? Detective Atme, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun this is, sir lawyer. It's truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now, once again, you have thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Then my urgent enemy struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just now you testified that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. Ugh, it seems I I've made another mistake. Detective Atme, that's not the only strange part of your testimony. What do you mean by that? For example, the very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. Ugh. Geniuses such as myself have always been misunderstood. I was sad. That's wrong. Objection. To err is human, to forgive divine. Humans aren't machines. They have souls. Feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate, and yes, they even make mistakes. Objection. Hey, hold on. I it's not as pretty as that. Really? What is it like then? Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. 
Mr. Wright, what, ex what exactly is it that you're asserting? Let's go ahead and save this. Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... Well, we're asserting that Mr. Abney is a master mask. The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Luke Acme's true identity is actually Mask the Mask. Order, order in the court. Mr. Ray, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Mr. Acme's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scenes, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. So that's because I analyzed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Oh, please. The explanation is far simpler than that, Detective Atme. The truth is that you are, in fact, Master Mask. But, but, but Mr. Ray, this, this photo it clearly shows Master Mask. This, uh, this security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor Department Store. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security. Then he simply dressed up as the thief and stole the urn. So, the ace detective is actually an ace thief? Is this true, witness? <laughs> the mass MO is pure genius, and so am I, Luke Acme, ace detective. You're very clever, I've come to such a conclusion. I am impressed, sir, lawyer. What? Witness, you, you're admitting it? Nick, now's your chance. Yes, yeah, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective Acme, when you assume the thief's identity... Godot blend number 102, my personal favorite. But Mr. Godot, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But, but, but Mr. Godot, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points, and I... I will admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of all cloth. But it is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trait. But this detective really is the thief and show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee drip dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see this decisive proof you have. Quickly. Huh? Oh, y y yes of course. Well, what's the big rush? Are you alright, Nick? Abby looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can. But can I really do it? The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Luke Atme is in fact a mask? Well, we actually don't have it yet. Proof? Of course I... I... I've got nothing. Huh. That's what I thought. A man has to hold his head high, up high no matter how bad things get after all. Ugh. I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove that this guy is the, chan the thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. But, are you gonna just give up and let us lose this? So, you've come to your senses, have you, Sir Lawyer? I... Uh, I can't think of a counterattack at all. Seems a cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. Mr. Godot, if you have anything further to add, then... What? Well, oh, oh, who? Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Mr. Light, what are you doing here? Nicky boy. The thing you've been looking for. I think I found it. You mean, that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well, but that's... The sacred urn! Nick, it's the urn! 
Order, order, order! You, madam! That own, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants A's detective, Luke Atme. Oh, Desi, you're the best! Sacred urn updated in the court record, found in the office of Luke Acme, as Pink watches over it. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Acme? Even you are gonna have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Objection. Huh. Pathetic. Mr. Godot, do you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man has to, was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. You're still denying that Mr. Acme was involved? Before casting aspersions at Detective Acme, consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree... Desiree Delight, is that correct? Y yes What about it? Huh. How charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. But what are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen owner anywhere. Including the office of the good detective here. So you found the urn. What does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. What? I just brought it here from the detective's office. Please, madam. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound the tragedy we have witnessed to. You're wrong. I would never... I would never do such a thing. Mr. Light. Please, Nicky boy. You've got to help me talk some sense to these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Owen was actually in the Acme Detective Agency. I can prove where the urn was. By the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, eh? Oh, come now. Now you're really making me laugh, sir, lawyer. Fingerprints indeed. May I go on? Good. Now, it would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. In any case, I'm always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. What about, Mr. Ray? This witness's fingerprints would mean nothing anyway. N Nick, what are you going to do now? I've come too far to turn back now. Acme must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there, I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes that the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. So what is all this fuss about fingerprints, anyway? Mr. Atme, do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey Nick, come on, open it up! Hey, wait a minute! We can't just open his private property! Don't be such a fuddy-duddy, this is an important investigation! Well, what's in there? But hang on a sec, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kinda hard and smooth. Well, hello there! It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at that time, but I did touch what was inside. Well, what? You touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. Well, uh, th th that's just, just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to examine the fingerprints on that urn. If my fingerprints are on there, then it proves that the urn was in Detective Atby's office. Objection! Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Of course it does. Well, what do you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of exhibitions, said. I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could take, make it look more valuable. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after that was yesterday at the Acme Detective Agency. Huh. This blend. Godot blend number 107. I've decided it's a little too bitter after all. Order. 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 I accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait. Wait a moment, Your Honor. There's no need for that. No need, you say? Precisely. 
I already know Mr. Lake's fingerprints so on that urn. Well, what are you saying? Yes, I finally broken him down. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Boy, well, he looks... Okay. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. This guy is nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and only Mask the Mask. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my little performance. <laughs> well, Mr. Godot, what's Mr. Acme's condition? He's still in the lobby laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he, he seems to be. Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Light really wasn't the thief. The court finds a defen defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. You're wrong. Wrong, I tell you. Er, uh, um, I mean... Not exactly wrong so much, but actually not right is what I'm really trying to say. Oh no, he's not... This can't be happening. The thief. The sneaky, odious thief who's been stealing all the treasures. It's me. I'm him. I'm the one you want. I'm the thief, I tell you. So do it. Pronounce me guilty, please. I don't know what kind of kangaroo court you all think this is, but... The true identity of thief has already been proven. Please hurry and pass jet. What are you talking about? I've already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. Mr. Cadeau, don't don't just stand there drinking coffee. Huh. Hey there, Mr. Thief. Y y yes sir? If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I I'm sorry. I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you are a master mess, then prove it. That's what it means. Y yes sir, I'd be happy to. He says he'll be happy to, Nick. That's kinda cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Good boy, just remember one thing. A boy only gets one chance in his life. To become a man. I know that, I, I won't fail, I swear. Okay then, talk. We're all listening. And that is where we're gonna call it, because I wanna save his testimony for the next video, so... But, uh, we will be finishing off day one of the trial here in the next episode. Hope you guys looking forward to that. But thank you guys so much for watching this. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. And I'll be seeing you guys again next time.